the group of eight, or also known as G8, consists of eight countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, France, West Germany, Italy, Japan, Canada, and Russia. Officially, the meeting was made up of six countries known as the G6. Later, Canada became a member in 1977, making it the G7. At the beginning of 1994, Russia joined the meeting and the G7 became the G8 or Political 8. However, Russia only became an official member in 1997. A letter was kicked out in 2014 over the illegal annexation of Crimea in Ukraine. The objective of the G8 is to try to solve the global problems by discussing big issues and planning what actions to take in order to solve these issues by holding annual meetings. Each meeting has specific objectives depending on international conditions. In the 1975, the rise of the oil crisis had the G8 hold its first meeting to provide emergency responses to the problem. In the 1980s, it was the global environmental issues that were of the G8 concern. In the 1990s, the meeting discussed about the economic transition, the debt and financial instability. In the 21st century, problems facing Africa and the Middle East were discussed. But was the G8 able to meet its objectives? One of the most recent successes of the G7 is the agenda agreed upon after thorough discussion. Majority of the signatory countries have signed agreements to fulfill this agenda. Most notably, six of the G7 members have announced an investment of nearly 3.8 billion Canadian dollars in supporting quality education for women in conflict-affected nations, another success on the motive of creating a hospitable future for the future generations. Five of the G7 members have signed the Ocean Plastic Charter. Canada alone have announced a contribution of 262 million in combating ocean pollution. In an effort to protect the survivors' information against abuse, all members of the G7 have agreed and signed the child law commitment to end sexual and gender-based violence, abuse and harassment in digital contexts which are consistent with the former G7 roadmap for a gender-responsive economic environment. With this, member countries will be better collaborated on reacting against data breaches of survivors' information. Despite its successes, the G8 had some failures. The G8 agreed to recheck its commitment to provide universal treatment for HIV. Unfortunately, the rich countries refused to invest on it, especially in respect to the aid to Africa. G8 commitment is totally inadequate in regards to determining the percentage reduction in carbon emissions. Also, it is clear that financial deregulation has created financial crisis. There are still many indebted countries which remain excluded from the deal. So, how does the G8 impact business? The G8 countries were urged to cooperate even more closely to help stabilize the world economy and pave the way for strong global growth. With open innovation gaining weight, it is important to promote integration of knowledge and technology by strengthening exchange and networking of human resources and other forms of collaboration. It is vital that G8 governments, together with business, cooperate on policies to facilitate and encourage much-needed research and development as well as investments in low-carbon technologies. Also, maintaining open trade and investment regimes remain of critical to generating economic growth and prosperity around the world economy. Is the G8 still relevant? Despite being criticized for its exclusivity, its small size and its members' like-mindedness is the source for its efficacy. Excluding Russia, the G8 member countries share comparative perspectives, values and interests which in turn facilitate shared policy preferences on various issues including those of human rights, regional stability and humanitarian intervention. With the continuous dependence on the exclusive gathering of the like-minded advanced market democracies, the G8 will keep directing diplomatic attention and material resources to the world's most troublesome political and security issues. The G8 holds distinct advantages in discussing matters of high politics, including human rights, peace, and security. G8 pioneers defended internet freedom, focused on climate change and biodiversity, proposed ventures to enhance nuclear safety, and proposed steps to build a knowledge economy and to reduce unemployment. Therefore, the G8 is said to have affirmed its relevance at the recent time and is looking forward to participate in making the world a better place. Thank you.